today, there's a lot of discussion about the future of mankind. Many believe we are entering a cold and dark world where all life becomes redundant and the machines take over. And it may be one possible future. Slowly but surely, we may be removing ourselves from the big picture. Machines are doing more and more of the tasks we do better and faster than we can do them. So how should we proceed? Should we stop moving forwards altogether? Stop all technological advances? Or should we just keep going, full speed ahead, and see what happens? After all, we don't know what this might bring. But are these really the only choices we have? On the one hand, we have man and machine dependence, where man is vital to control the machine. And on the other hand, we have man and machine independence, where the machine can do everything without man. But how about we strive for a balance? How about we strive for man and machine synergy? I am here today to present an idea that I believe points us in the right direction. I am here to talk to you about evolution-assisted design. The point is to attempt a union between the powers of each side. The conscience, perception, and decision-making of man with the uncompromising speed, logic, and precision of modern machines. So what is evolution-assisted design all about? Well, my passion is to create. Since I was a child, I have always been expressing the ideas in my head and bringing them to life. I remember my first drawings, my first stories. I remember composing my first song. Now, at the time, I thought it was going to hit the charts. <laughs> it didn't. But I'm quite lucky today to tell you that creativity has become my job. From the creation of brands to communicate ideas, to the development of experiences to feel emotions, my role is to find creative solutions to a wide range of problems. To a wide range of problems. Although I work with fast and powerful computers, the creative process, it's one that takes time. From conception, to prototyping, to testing, this repetitive process is limited by my own mental capacities. Now, <laughs> there's only so much coffee you can drink. And this need for time can lead to a lot of frustration over details that need to be perfect, but are not. And sometimes, quite frankly, I don't even come close to a convincing idea. Interestingly enough, this creative process is very similar to another process discovered in 1859 by a certain Charles Darwin. You guessed it, biological evolution. It's actually comprised of the same steps under slightly different names. Variation, selection, and inheritance. Even this talk is the result of evolution. The text was subject to variation, Whole sections were discarded, others selected to be used in the following generations, until finally, here I am, speaking in front of you, expressing the result of this evolution. Biological evolution has given rise to the most complex, flexible, and performant systems. It's given us the human eye, the peacock's tail, and carnivorous plants. Well, it's also given us the blobfish. True story. But seeing the power of evolution in nature and its similarities with the creative process led me to wonder if I could infuse it into my own designs. Could my designs have a life of their own and evolve over generations the same way we do, the same way all life does? Imagine creative content that could live past its point of creation. Imagine evolving designs that would adapt to the purpose they must fill 
and what the designer wants. Imagine logo types, typographies, jewelry, sound, or music as entire virtual species that could mutate to propose adapted solutions to the challenges we face. Now, I'm not the first one to think of simulating evolution in computers. It's already been widely successful in engineering. So, taking those same principles and applying them to my field of work should have been easy enough, right? Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> you see, at the heart of evolution is the step of selection. Survival of the fittest. Now, I do mean fittest as in most adapted to the immediate local environment. I'm not talking about that guy that gets pumped at the gym. Without selection, evolution cannot move forward and start proposing better solutions. In engineering, it's simple enough for the machine to calculate the better designs. Essentially, how close do the evolving designs come to the wanted criteria? Is this engine faster than the others? Is this turbine blade more efficient than the others? The machine can select the better designs and improve them further. With creative content, however, I'm not looking for the faster typeface or more cost-effective sound. Instead of observing quantifiable values like speed and performance, I use values such as beauty. But how can I put a number on that? <laughs> it's something which is largely subjective. It's rooted in culture and personal taste. You may like classical music, while you prefer rock. You may like Picasso, you Monet, and you, well, you may think Fifty Shades of Grey was a good idea. <laughs> Because of these relative measures that are based on opinion, it's currently impossible for the machine to execute this step of selection alone. And that's where we come in. This is a perfect case where man is an essential component to the process. This is a place where we need to mix our human qualities with those of the machine. This is a place for synergy. Now, perhaps this sounds complex. So let me give you a simple example in the evolution of colors. We can generate a variety of colors by using values of red, green, and blue. I can then pass these values to the machine to evolve. The machine will generate hundreds, even thousands of possibilities that I can simply pick from and say which are successful in my eyes. In doing so, the computer will use the successful options to produce the following generations. I can then apply my selection again, and over time, steer the evolution of this virtual species towards what I need. It could be I'm looking for warm colors, or perhaps cold colors. Essentially, machine is handling variation and inheritance, while man is handling selection. Taking this further, here's an example in the creation of jewelry. With a system to generate the shape of a ring, I can then pass those parameters to the machine to evolve, and the machine may produce variations that my mind would not have imagined. Again, I apply my selection, and over time, steer the evolution of this virtual species towards what I need. And each time, I can also branch off in other directions, if I so desire. And each time I restart the evolution, the outcome may be completely different. Granted, sometimes not even wearable. Now, perhaps I should start my own brand of jewelry and call it maybe wearable. It has a nice ring to it. The use of evolution-assisted design has forced me to rethink my role as a designer. The computer has allowed me to work harder, better, faster, stronger. No, wait. <laughs> the computer has allowed me to work 
with haste, more efficiently, and at a larger scale. It has helped me to produce more adapted, personalized, and unique designs for my projects. I am no longer a simple user of passive tools, nor am I irrelevant to the process altogether. Instead, I am a watchful guardian, working hand in hand with the machine to create virtual life and to steer the evolution of my very own virtual universes. It's as if I'm an atheist with a god complex. Explains why some people say, I don't believe in myself. Now, what could this mean for the day after? Instead of evolution-assisted jewelry or evolution-assisted sound, we could apply the same process to politics. We could turn laws into evolving entities, taking into account the desires of each and every one of us, the rules of our society would adapt to better fit our community. The same as we are shaped by our environment, we would become the environment that the laws must adapt to. The laws would not shape us, we would shape them. And we could all influence the evolution by selecting the models we want and discarding the ones we don't. We would constantly fine-tune the system and the machine would propose new and more educated ways of solving the issues we face. So what might you want to evolve tomorrow? What opportunities could this collaboration create? We do not need to fear machines and artificial intelligence. Instead, let's look into new ways of living alongside them and working together. I truly believe we should be excited to create new technologies. But we should never forget to include our passion, our drive, and above all, our humanity. <laughs>